welcome to my weekly reading vlog if you guys have noticed i've actually been mia for the past you know month or so but i'm back it's the 24th of april it's monday it's a new week so hopefully i will be back into my groove of updating you about what i read this week has no particular theme so i'm just gonna read whatever book that's calling out to me and for the first book this week i am going to read the push by ashley audrain um i don't know if that's how you pronounce her last name but yeah if you guys um do not know this book came out in 2021 and when it first came out it was loved by a lot of people and i am finally going to pick this up for myself so this book is about a couple blythe and fox who adopt a girl called violet and you know as time went by blythe noticed that there is no mother-daughter connection with violet and not just that she notices something different about violet she's acting pretty weird and she's sharing her concerns you know blythe is sharing her concerns with fox telling him that something's wrong with violet he would you know just tell her that she's imagining things and that it's all in her head um from all of that dismissal she started actually questioning her sanity so this is more of a psychological thriller and I'm quite excited about this book. In this book as well, Blythe gives birth to a boy and in here it's a totally different experience. She's definitely having that pure connection of a mother and child. Um, you know, other than that, I don't know what's going to happen, but it says that something drastic happened or um, some big change that happened. Maybe it is the birth of the son. I am not sure. I'm actually excited to read this and find out for myself. So hopefully I'll update you as soon as I get into it. Um, I was trying to look for an audiobook for this. I couldn't find it. So I'm just going to read it physically. Um, unfortunately, I haven't done that in a while. So let's see how things are going, if I'll be able to actually read it quickly. So I'm hoping the writing in this is actually very smooth and reads quickly. I mean, let's see. We'll find out. Hey guys, so I'm only 9% in, but I just wanted to pop by here to say that I don't think Violet is adopted. I know I said at the beginning that she might be adopted. I think she's actually their daughter. I'm not very sure, but it kind of reads that way. Uh, I know it's too early for me to say, but then I'll update you more. Um, so far, I'm enjoying the writing. It is told in a format where Blythe is writing a letter to her husband and sharing her side of the story. And in the beginning, it kind of shows that they're no longer together and that he has a new wife. Um, but you know, we'll see. So far, I'm enjoying it. It's easy to read. I don't need the audiobook, thank God. So let's continue and I'll update you. Hey guys, so I just got done from the gym and we're gonna go to the store and buy TV for the bedroom, you know, that we have at my in-laws, um, just so we can watch TV. We got ourselves the TV and I'm so excited. Um, for now, I'm just gonna watch tonight and just relax. I got 19% of the push and so far, I am really enjoying it. Um, it's reading like a five stars book and I can't wait to share uh, more w of what I think about the book. morning it's thursday it's 7 24 a.m sylvester is keeping me company as you can hear him and see him possibly see him so i'm 50 percent in the push and i am really enjoying it so far i know i'm reading it kind of slow um i'm taking my time reading it because it's kind of difficult to read just seeing how a little girl turn into a psychopath i honestly think she's a psychopath um 
so like we predicted Violet is actually uh, their daughter she wasn't adopted or anything but um, I can definitely see the tension between her relationship with her mother and uh, from that you can actually see that Blythe herself had a difficult relationship with her mother and her mother in turn as well had a dis difficult relationship with her mother so Blythe's grandmother anyways it's kind of confusing um, so basically what happened is this storyline is told from Blythe's perspective to her husband as well as like the past of Blythe's mother so you can definitely see what's truly happening to the women in this family it's kind of messed up and crazy so what actually happened in the story is when Blythe was pregnant with Violet she really had a very difficult time being pregnant at the same time um, the childbirth was very difficult and painful. So anyways, as soon as Violet was born, she was never close with her mother. I mean, Blythe tried her best to be very close with her daughter, tried to be the mother that Violet might need, gives her hugs, kisses, tries to be a good mother, but then Violet was very difficult. She cries all the time. She was violent as a baby, and she was violent as a toddler. And then Blythe gave birth to the second baby, Sam. And you can see Violet being a good sister, but then she does have those psychopathic tendencies. And for me, when I was reading, I was actually scared for Sam's life. I am 50% in, I'm not sure what's gonna happen, but I truly feel that Violet is gonna hurt Sam. And that's kind of sad, like I can't. I don't think I can read that. But, you know, I'm just going to continue reading. Hopefully nothing happens to Sam. And um, yeah, it's just like a very difficult story to read. It's beautifully written. I mean, I am really enjoying my time reading this, but it is difficult to, you know, swallow. Anyways, I am going to get ready for work right now and then uh, continue reading it hopefully after work sylvester i actually tried to wake up early this morning um i put the alarm on for 4 30 and then i woke up at 6 30 i just couldn't get up and as soon as i got up i just was on my phone for a while and then i continued reading a little bit and now i'm filming this and now it is 7 30 i have to get ready for work and so I'm going to continue reading after work. <laughs> so yeah, Sylvester and I are saying have a good day. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep? Every night, and what's it dreaming of? I wonder. I know it's dark in here, but I actually only have 10 minutes before I go upstairs to the gym. But I just wanted to let you know that I am 70% in the push and I have to tell you, it's crazy. It's a crazy ride. A lot of things are happening to Blythe. Her husband is so annoying. I can't stand him. He is such a prick. He does not believe anything Blythe says. He's not supportive. He always assumes that everything is her fault. He would always say that she's imagining things, that everything is in her head which kind of is annoying that there is no support system and every time like she would suggest couple therapy or wanted to go to you know just therapy in general he would always say oh just go by yourself you have the issue i have nothing so that was kind of annoying like what type of a husband that's not very supportive i mean i am enjoying the book so much and i can see definitely Blythe's transformation from trying so hard to be a mother to not caring at all just because of something that happened in the book and that thing that happened is just so sad and I had to put the book down for a while just because I couldn't stomach what was happening so that's why it kind of took me a while to just get through this book and hopefully I'll be done with it by tonight because 
I'm just excited to see what happens or I'm just eager to find out what's gonna happen if people are gonna find out the truth or not I highly highly recommend this book I mean I'm not done with it yet but it's definitely a five stars read it is a bit it, it does have trigger warnings like um, I won't mention them but try to research what those trigger warnings are just because I don't want to spoil the book um, but oh my god it is beautiful it's sad i mean it that book just like is packed with emotional is it distress emotional anxiety distress sadness a little bit of happiness but yeah definitely enjoying the read but i am gonna head up at the gym right now and then i'll update you guys later so i finally finished the push and i definitely give this five stars it's amazing it has a lot of emotions a lot of heartache and I definitely think it's worth to read but you know I have to tell you that it has a lot of trigger warnings so you better search about it but Blythe I mean she went through a lot of crap um, just from having a daughter that's a psychopath maybe a psychopath so you gotta find out by yourself but yes her husband is a prick like I said earlier so he is definitely not supportive i feel like he was self-centered like all he thought about himself and all he wanted was a perfect life you know a perfect wife perfect family and i think he had that fantasy in his head that he kind of pushed onto blythe and blythe just wanted to be this perfect wife for him and a perfect mother and when things didn't turn out as he had expected he actually blamed everything on his wife and he wasn't supportive at all and that's the thing about this book that actually put me off like he was such a nasty person and i truly believe that if blythe or even violet had a good support system like blythe really wanted to help her daughter initially by maybe taking her into like to see someone but because fox was living in that fantasy of like a perfect family he couldn't believe that his daughter is different or his daughter is not acting the way she should be so that's why i truly believe if things were tackled at the beginning a lot of things in this book won't happen i know that this is a book and it should you know have a lot of twists and turns and a lot of like you know very dangerous things but i think the push is really teaching us to look out for early signs and to try and get help as soon as possible before things turn really drastic so i think this book is really beautiful and i loved everything about it um i just loved um ashley's writing it was gripping and very difficult to read most of the time you know what i mean like it, every time i put it down i really want to pick it up and read but then as soon as i read like a couple of pages i get like this deep you know this deep sad feeling for Blythe and for what's happening to her what's really important in this book is the relationship of mothers and their daughters like you could see Blythe's mother's relationship with her own mother as well going through a very difficult time and then Blythe and her own mother and then Blythe and Violet so it's a lot of like tangled web and it's very difficult to decipher but um, yeah I, I truly love this book and um, I highly recommend it it does need a person who has a very strong stomach it's not graphic but the feelings that are in this book are very very strong and I highly recommend this book so much anyways for now I'm not gonna read anything I'm gonna watch a movie and then maybe I'll think about the next book that I'm gonna pick up for now I have nothing on mind to read nothing is calling out to me so once i get something that's calling out to me i'm gonna update you about like the book that i'm gonna read next but yes yeah, so far it is such an enjoyable read yeah anyways i'm gonna update you but you know for this weekend i'm actually gonna go to the beach house of so my husband's family's beach house so i'm just waiting for him unfortunately he has to go to work today because he had a day off yesterday so i'm waiting for him to get off work and then we're gonna head to the beach house but for now i ordered some lunch i ordered some sushi because his work is very close to this house so he's gonna come here for lunch and then we're gonna have sushi and after that you know in the afternoon we're gonna go to the beach house we got sushi from manzo we're gonna have lunch i'm waiting for my husband to come back home 
and let me set you up somewhere so I can show you what we got. First one is we got some California roll. Like, oh, let me open it. So it's like a crab roll with um, crispy shrimp on top. <gasps> dynamite, shrimp dynamite on top. And then the third one is another crab roll as well with spicy mayo on top. Oh, can't wait. There we go. drinks but I think I'm craving like Diet Coke or something. So difficult to do this with the one hand. Success! Yeah. Anyways, hey everyone, it is 5.44 p.m. We're on our way to the beach house and we just stopped to buy Spinney's to get some, you know, some snacks and burger buns and we're on our way. It takes us two and a half hours actually to drive there. Um, but, you know, I'm not alone. I'll be with my husband, so I don't think he'd be interested to listen to an audiobook while we drive there. But anyways, we'll listen to some music and just enjoy the ride. I'll be the one driving. Um, yeah, I can't wait. I well, guess what? We ran into trouble. Our car kind of broke down, so the tire almost went flat. Um, and we're here actually at the shop getting it sorted. They needed to change the valve because the air was leaking out. So we're just here getting the tire fixed before we head back on our way to the beach house. It is still going to take us two and a half hours because we are very far off. We're just at the beginning. So thankfully we actually caught it before we went into the highway. Just in the way up at Beach House. Just going to have sausage roll I made myself today in the kitchen. <laughs> With Ainsley, Harriet, two salt and pepper. <laughs> fish, look at the fish now. <laughs> Morning, everyone. It's 7:30 a.m. I just got up. My husband got up earlier than me because he went fishing with his dad. But we're at the beach house, and you can't see the beach from here. But if you go a bit over there, you could see it. And that building over there, that's the main house. That's the main beach house. 
and we're here in a little separate corner or quarters um but yeah it's actually pretty in here so it's a bit messy but i'm on the bed there's this massive chair that i could do my reading in so yeah i'm so excited we're only here for one night which was last night and we're going back today i know it took us two and a half hours to get here and ever since this car saga <laughs> car drama um we were so exhausted when we arrived yesterday so yeah so i actually started reading a flicker in the dark by stacy willingham last night and i'm not far away in i'm just five percent in but i think i kind of explained what this book is about but i'm gonna read the synopsis for you so when Chloe Davis was 12, six teenage girls went missing in her small Louisiana town. By the end of the summer, Chloe's father had been arrested as a serial killer and promptly put in prison. Chloe and the rest of her family were left to grapple with the truth and try to move forward while dealing with the aftermath. Now, 20 years later, Chloe is a psychologist in a private practice in Baton Rouge and getting ready for her wedding. She finally has a fragile grasp on the happiness she's worked so hard to get. Sometimes, though, she feels as out of control of her own life as the troubled teens who are her patients. And then the local teenage girl goes missing and then another, and that terrifying summer comes crashing back. Is she paranoid and seeing parallels that aren't really there? Or for the second time in her life, is she about to unmask a killer? So, oh, this is a debut. I didn't know that. So when this book started, uh, like I said, I'm not far away and I'm just 5% in and um, the prologue in the book is more about um, a feeling or a sense of safety and fear. So it started with a girl who's afraid of monsters and then she was in the forest one day and then um, she felt like something's chasing her. So she was running back home. As soon as she gets home, she sees her dad and he's saying, oh, you're safe, you're safe. And that's when she felt safe. But then, of course, it ended with um, that was no longer the case or something like that. But then, yeah, uh, it was more about a feeling and not the storyline. Um, chapter one, it started with Chloe actually seeing one of her patients who's a teenage girl who's actually um, cutting herself. Um, so yeah, and then that's it. I actually haven't gotten so far into the book, but it is um, good. I mean, I can't decide yet how I feel about this book. So gladly I found this book on audiobook. So I found it on um, Scribd. So I'm listening to it while reading this book. So that's exciting. I want to continue staying in bed here right now. Uh, I don't want to get up and get coffee, so I'm going to read a little bit more before I get up and get myself some coffee. So I am. Lazy, lazy, lazy morning. Said you needed a break and left with no heads up I was strong for your sake but it made my heart drop Cause it's always been you and I Give me one more try this So I was sat outside, I mean the scene outside is beautiful You know, watching the sea, watching the beach but then, oh my God, it's too hot outside. I just couldn't bear <laughs> sitting there for too long. So I decided to just come in. I'm gonna continue reading here. And then once I'm ready to go in for a swim, then I'll go back outside. I mean, for now, let me just stay inside with you know the AC and just chillaxing over here. Said you needed a break and left with no heads up I was strong for your sake but it made my heart drop 
Cause it's always been you and I Give me one more try This is messing with my mind Not gonna lie But I'll give you the space So you can figure this out I've been losing sleep and it won't Hey guys, so I just wanted to update you that I am 37% into the book A Flicker in the Dark and so far I'm enjoying it okay. It feels a bit like a very typical thriller book, like I've read a lot with the same, you know, synopsis, same trope kind of thing, you know, a father being a serial killer and then murders started to happen in the future which are similar to the father and then, you know, a copycat in. So I've read a lot of these type of books. I'm not sure if I'm gonna enjoy this so much, but so far it's reading good. Um, it does have a high rating on Goodreads, so I am having high hopes really to actually see what happens. Uh, but so far, yeah, Chloe is trying to run away from the whole, like from her past, let's say for example, and then she started her own practice into psychology. And then she has a new life, she has a, a fiance, she's planning for her wedding. And then all of a sudden, um, girls started disappearing from her area. And those disappearances are exactly, I mean, they appear to be like the disappearances that happened when she was younger, when she was 12, 12 years old. And it was very similar to her father's um, type of killing. Anyways, um, I've read a lot of books similar to this, so I'm hoping this would be different. Um, but then we'll see, you know, we'll update you once I get more into the book. So we'll see. Man, I'm so tired. So I drove back from the beach house to my in-laws and then drove by my in-laws to this house. So kind of like a total of four hours driving. But then the good thing about it is I finished reading A Flicker in the Dark and I give it three stars. So I have to tell you, it really felt like I was reading a very typical thriller book. Like I felt like I read this already, but then I didn't because I read so many like it. It was very predictable, forgettable. The characters are annoying. <laughs> the main character is annoying, you know, when they're unreliable, they're, you know, drinking alcohol or taking a lot of pills and then they aren't sure about the things that they saw and you know it's very common and I don't like that trope anymore in books. I used to like them so much but then as soon as I was reading this I felt like I just couldn't connect with it just because it felt like okay it wasn't amazing like I liked it but I didn't love it. So yeah I was able to predict who the killer was from the beginning and I feel that this book is very forgettable, like I'm gonna forget about it three weeks later. Don't know what the big hype was about. Um, I'm sure a lot of people would like this book, but for me personally, I did not love it. But I enjoyed it okay. Anyways, it's 11 p.m. and I would like to say goodnight and I would end the vlog here and I would like to thank you all for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and like this video if you really like it. Thank you all, bye-bye.